I spend a lot of my time helping other streamers hone their craft, and one of the questions I get asked the most often is this. Should I go with Streamlabs or Stream Elements for my alerts and overlays? Each of the two providers has their pros and cons, and I'm going to run you through the hard facts before giving you my personal recommendation on which service to choose. Before we get into the video, I'd just like to say I stream every Monday, Thursday and Saturday over on Twitch, so feel free to come along, chill out and ask any questions you have about streaming. When I streamed for the very first time many, many years ago, I used Streamlabs and XSplit. This was before the days of Streamlabs OBS and OBS.Live. Heck, people still used regular OBS and the current software package, OBS Studio, was just a twinkle in its creator's eyes. Nowadays, there are plenty of options when it comes to streaming software, and just as many options when it comes to alert providers. Still, the two that reign supreme are Streamlabs and Stream Elements, so I'll be comparing those two for this video. Let's start with software. Streamlabs offers a complete software package through Streamlabs OBS, which is essentially a reskin of OBS Studio with some extra Streamlabs features to make setting up overlays and alerts super easy. It even has a built-in activity feed, bot manager, overlay store, and even a marketplace for optional extensions. Note that I said marketplace there. We'll get to that a little later on. Stream Elements solution, on the other hand, is a plugin for the already well-liked OBS Studio. It's called OBS.Live and you can either download the two separately or you can download them both right from Stream Elements' website. The plugin adds an activity feed, a chat window, a media manager so you can play songs on stream through OBS and even cloud backups of your settings and content. So, other than a couple of features, what's the real difference between the two? Streamlabs OBS takes a lot more processing power to run than OBS.Live. Why? Because with Streamlabs, you're running all your alerts, animated overlays, and all your widgets from your own computer. You incorporate them as a source in Streamlabs OBS, and then they'll run locally, using your CPU. This may be fine if you have a powerful processor, but most streamers will see a performance decline in encoding, especially while playing games. With Stream Elements, you create your overlays and alerts on their website combining all your widgets and any sub or follower goals, and then your entire overlay can be imported as a single browser source into OBS Studio, meaning everything runs on Stream Elements servers and keeps your PC chugging through like a champ so it can focus on the important things, like running Valorant. Even if you don't have any widgets or overlays, the OBS Studio and OBS Live combination is a much, much more resource efficient than Streamlabs OBS because of how lightweight base OBS Studio is. Now that we've discussed the differences in streaming software, we'll take a look at some of the platform specific features. And I'll start with Stream Elements. As I mentioned earlier, Stream Elements overlays are created on their website and imported into OBS by means of a browser source. Because of this, your overlays, alerts, custom widgets, and everything else are all saved in the cloud and can be easily transferred from one PC to another if you end up buying a new machine, whether it's to replace your current one or to act as a dedicated streaming workhorse. Stream Elements also has something huge that Streamlabs is severely lacking, and that's the custom widget. This is essentially a blank canvas that allows developers to create and share their own widgets with the community. For example, let's look at this widget I have on my stream, twitch.tv slash just that hat, by the way. It's a rotating feed widget developed by a programmer called the Firewire, and it's made entirely within Stream Elements with no external programs required. Now let's look at Streamlabs' unique functionality. Streamlabs has nothing, at least nothing free. When Logitech purchased Streamlabs back in 2019, a lot of the free overlay packages that were available beforehand have since been locked behind a paywall and that paywall just so happens to be a subscription service called Streamlabs Prime. Remember when I said that Streamlabs OBS had an overlay marketplace? Yeah, most of their decent overlays are Prime only, as are every single one of their extensions, or apps as they're called. Even with Prime, the only unique feature is the apps, and most of them are similar to existing Twitch extensions anyway. I suppose you also get access to pre-made panels for your stream, 
but this isn't really too beneficial as I'd recommend creating your own to follow your brand anyway. Oh, and you have a few more merchandise options, but this is pretty irrelevant for small streamers unless you're an artist. And in that case, I'd recommend using Teespring over Streamlabs or Stream Elements anyway. If you want to know why that is, leave a like on this video and I'll make another video explaining it. When it comes to features that both services offer, Stream Elements comes out top in almost everything. You get a custom bot name, free. You get access to se.pay, which ensures you have chargeback protection on all your donations and it's even much easier to share your designs with other people or manage your overlays for multiple different accounts. For example, if you had a YouTube Live account and a Twitch account. However, there is one area in which Streamlabs dominates Stream Element, and that's the learning curve. With Streamlabs and Streamlabs OBS, it's pretty much a few clicks and you're ready to go. Of course, for the most basic Stream Elements features, it's a few clicks and a browser source input, but it's easier to reposition stuff on the fly with Streamlabs as everything is run locally on your own computer. The learning curve for Stream Elements is quite steep and the website UI isn't the easiest to navigate. As a result, Streamlabs OBS is a lot easier for people who are completely new to the streaming scene and are perhaps not particularly tech savvy and just want to sit down and press that go live button. So finally, which service do I recommend? This really depends on your needs and your vision of your stream. If you're an absolute 100% beginner who has no idea where to start and just wants to get going and get going right now, then I would probably say use Streamlabs. However, if you really, really care about how your stream looks and you want some awesome customization options to get your creative juices flowing, I would absolutely implore you to learn the ins and outs of stream elements. You'll have a lot more freedom and the software will adapt to your needs and help you grow without you having to pay a penny. Naturally, there'll be some people who disagree with me and have differing opinions, and that's okay. Leave your counter arguments down in the comments below or join the Discord and let's have a discussion. And finally, just a quick reminder, I do stream every Monday, Thursday and Saturday over at twitch.tv slash just that hat. So if you have any questions about streaming, gaming or anything else really, come along and chill with the amazing community we have over there. That's all from me for now. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe and hit the bell for more stream advice and tips. See you around, folks.